Fluids. So what are our goals in this session? Well, we're going to talk about fluids, uh, define what they are, and really our main goal here is to see that we can still apply Newton's second law even though we've got situations involving fluids. So, some of this is going to be new, right, when we talk about a new idea like fluids, but much of what we talk about with fluids will involve familiar things like Newton's second law and energy conservation. We better start though by talking about what is a fluid in the first place. So what's a good definition? What do you think? So what we're going to say is a fluid is something that can flow. So a fluid can be a liquid or a gas. So often out on the street we might use fluid and liquid interchangeably, but we have a broader definition of fluid in physics, anything that can flow, a liquid or a gas. Okay, so let's move on to what we call the buoyant force. So when we deal with fluids, we bring in this new force, the buoyant force, and in general, it's an upward force exerted by a fluid on an object in that fluid. That fluid can be either completely immersed in, that, in the fluid, or it can be just partly immersed. So for instance, we right now are surrounded by air. So that's a fluid, it's a gas, and so in fact there's an upward buoyant force on you right now because you are immersed in air. So we're going to survey your initial ideas about the buoyant force, see what you think. So here's a question. We've got a wooden block, it has a weight of 100 newtons, and it floats exactly 50% submerged in a particular fluid. So it's pretty simple, you just toss a block in a container of fluid and you see that it floats 50% submerged. What does this tell you about the upward buoyant force exerted on the block by the fluid? What, if anything, does that tell you? Okay, so you've got various choices, uh, 100 newtons, 50 newtons, it depends on the density of the fluid, it depends on the density of the block, it depends on both of those densities. Okay, so what do you think? So pick your favorite answer there and then we'll discuss. So let's go back to a more familiar example. So simply our 100 newton block is at rest on a horizontal surface, like a flat tabletop. Okay, so what's the normal force exerted on the block by the table? Great, so what we're going to do is, you know, grab our free body diagram here. We know that if the block has a weight of 100 newtons, that means that the force of gravity on it is a downward force of 100 newtons. And the earth is trying to pull the block down through the table, and the table says, I don't think so and it applies an upward normal force of 100 newtons to prevent the block from falling through the table. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Uh, we know Newton's second law says there's no net force in this case. The force is balanced. That means the normal force has to be the same size as the weight, the gravitational force. Okay, so how does that apply to our block floating in the fluid? So, we could apply exactly the same logic. Okay, so it's the same um, free body diagram here. We've got a downward mg force, the earth is trying to pull it down, and the fluid prevents the block from falling down, and so it must exert an equal and opposite force, equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So the buoyant force simply has to be 100 newtons. That comes out of Newton's second law. Now later we'll talk about how, you know, the buoyant force depends on the density of the fluid and the volume displaced and the value of g, etc., etc., which is all true, but you can also get it very simply out of Newton's second law. And that's the lesson from, from this video today. Okay, so let's go back to our block on a table and we stack an extra little weight on top. It's an extra 50 Newtons on top. So what's the normal force now that the table exerts on the block? Okay, so we get a new buoyant force. We imagine that, uh, or we treat these two objects as just one blob with a combined weight of 150 newtons. And we know the thing stays at rest, so there must be a 150 newton upward force applied to that block by the table. 
Okay, and what is the effect of adding that 50 Newton weight on top? Well, it actually presses the block down a little bit further into the table, which is actually very hard to see. Okay, so if you take that same 50 Newton block and, and put it on top of your original 100 Newton block in the fluid, you can really see the block go down into the fluid. What's the point for us here? Well, we repeat the process with that free body diagram. Net mg of 150 newtons down. Everything stays at rest, so the buoyant force has to be 150 newtons. And again, this additional buoyant force comes from the fact that you're displacing a lot more fluid, 50% more fluid than you did before, in fact. OK, so the block does press the, the block down further into fl the fluid. And the interesting thing is it's a lot easier to see that than it is with a block depressing into the tabletop. OK, so our moral of the story here is even though we're dealing with this new thing, fluids, we can still get a lot of mileage out of applying Newton's second law to figure out what the buoyant force is. OK, and we will go on and talk about how the buoyant force uh, depends on things like the value of g and the volume of fluid displaced and the density of the fluid. But, uh, you know, we can also get a lot of mileage out of Newton's second law. Okay, so that is the takeaway for today.